Now, how would this going to happen? We're just coming back with our Christ and however he sets it up. Whether we're riding horses like I heard some guys, preachers say, or, or, but we're coming back with Christ and the brightness of Christ at that point will defeat Satan and bind him up and he'll lock him up for a thousand years. So that should be an exciting time. That is an exciting time. So really, I am excited because at any moment this could happen. That's why I'm in this particular passage. Now they've been waiting and waiting and waiting and they've been saying the rapture could happen for, for years and years and years and Jesus can come. But the Bible does talk about that the Jewish people had to be back in their land in these end times and have their own land and in 1948 they did take possession of the land in Israel and that was a, a key prophecy that had to take place and then another prophecy that had to take place was they had to get control of Jerusalem and in 67, 1967 they got control of Jerusalem from that point on Many of the scholars and the prophets and the people that were looking for Jesus knew it was just a time after that where he would come. We don't know what Jesus said in Matthew 24, that no man knows the day and hour, but you'll know when it's getting, when it's getting clear. You'll know when those signs. He says, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying that I am the Christ, and he will deceive many. Right now, there's people that are saying they're Jesus Christ, that they're saying that they're the Messiah. They're not the Messiah. Jesus said many will come. And there's people following them. There's people following them. There's a list of names that I was reading the other day of all these people that said they were Jesus Christ and say they are Jesus Christ, they're not Jesus Christ. Jesus said that they'll deceive many. He said you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and the kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. As you know right now, the gospel is going all around the world on many of these satellite stations. Many ministries are now have it on satellite going around the world and the gospel is being preached. Does it mean everybody's seen it? No. No, it doesn't mean everybody's seen it yet, but it's being preached and it's going around the world. And ministers have been preaching the gospel since Jesus left. They've been going around the world, but now it's truly going around the world on the internet and it's going into every nation. Many of these ministries out there are claiming that their ministries go in every nation of the world. Praise the Lord. Give God all the glory. And it's, it's true. So we know that the time is short. We know the time is short, but that's a good thing because Jesus will come. And he will come and boom, like that, he'll take his believers that love him and, and believe in him and he'll take us up in the twinkling of an eye and that it's going to be very quick before you know it you'll be on the other side and you'll be with Jesus and that's what they call the rapture of the church anyway I wanted to 
say something about, I'm, I'm excited about the rapture because I have to talk about the rapture. I would think I'm going to talk about the rapture in every show because the rapture is the most exciting thing in the world next to Jesus. The Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. But when that rapture takes place, we're going to be with him. And all your pain will be gone. Woe to those who miss the rapture and that are left here during those tribulation days and uh, that they might find Jesus at that time. But we're praying that you find Jesus Christ right now. Yeshua, his Hebrew name. But Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Receive him in your heart right now. You don't want to be left here. If he should come tonight, you don't want to be left here. And God forbid you would miss him. And then God forbid you would miss him in the tribulation. Because without Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am the way to the Father. No man gets to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way to the Father. You don't want to miss him. You don't want to miss Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ will take you to heaven. Without Jesus Christ, without the Father, without being with God, if you don't go to heaven, you go to hell. Where else? There's no in-between. There's no in-between. You're either going up or you're going down. The soul lives forever. So you're either going up or you're going down. And hell is not a good place. Hell is made for the devil and his demons, for Satan and his demons. You don't want to go there. You want to go to heaven and be with Jesus Christ. Nobody loves you like Jesus. He knows everything you're going through. He's watched you. He cares for you. He adores you. And he's got the best for you and the best plan. But he's reaching his hand out. He's reaching and he's knocking. And he's knocking on, on your door. I'm, this is just another knock. And he's knocking saying, let me in. Let me in. Let me in. Let him in tonight. Let him in and be sure that when that rapture comes... Be sure in the twinkling of an eye when we're all taken, when, when the believers are taken, you will go. You will go because he is the Lord Jesus. He is the son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Repeat that after me because I, that's one way of, of getting it in your heart. You say, Jesus, Jesus, I've tried it my own way. I want to live forever and be in, in, in glory with you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, with the angels and the saints. I want to receive you in my heart tonight. I want to receive you. I've sinned against you. I repent of my sins. Jesus, you died for me. I know you died for me. On that cross, I see pictures of it. I see movies of it. I know you died for me on that cross. You died on that cross to take away my sins. That's what Jesus Christ did. That's why he was up there on the cross. He didn't come just to die on a cross. He didn't just let them kill him. He came to die on the cross so to take away your sins and mine, to take away our sins. And he's been doing that for thousands of years. Thousands of people, thousands of years, people have been receiving Christ, millions, millions from the, from the time he left here. And they received the precious blood of Jesus that, 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 that died. The, the, the Jewish people, they would sacrifice animals. And the, the, they, would, they would atone for their, blood, their sins that way. But Jesus Christ came to be the last sacrifice, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's Jesus Christ. And that's why we receive him as Lord. And we say, Jesus, I receive that you un died on that cross for me. I receive it. That when you see me, because of that, it's nothing good that you've done. You, don't have, you didn't have to do a good thing. All you have to do is receive what he did. So when the Father says to you, why should I let you in heaven? Why should I let you in heaven? Why should I let you be with me? And you'll say, because your son Jesus died on the cross and I received that atoning blood to wash away my sins and that I can get close to you, Father, because of what Jesus did. And then the Father will say, okay, come on in.